Good morning, everybody. It is Monday. No, money Monday or Monday money. No, it's money Monday. So check it out. As you guys know, this is Dave Mo. Dave Mo flips. You already know. What we're going to be doing today is talking about a car that sold, whether or not we made or lost money. Anyways, if you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button, ring that bell, hit this opportunity. Without further ado, let's get into this video. That's my best friend. What's up, everybody? Welcome back, man. I hope you hit that subscribe button. Let's get right into it right now. Um, 05 Denali, 150,000 miles, green light, uh, typical buy, spent about, uh, winning bid was $2,300. After fees for ACV, fees for Dennis, which is like $26, and 185 to have a transporter that I was in this truck for something in the neighborhood of 26 and change, okay? Um, with that being said, a little backstory on the truck. The truck gets delivered on Friday. Uh, legitimately got delivered last Friday. It's Sunday. So, nine days ago. All right. As I told you guys, every time you get a green lit car, make that the car you drive. You want it to break down under warranty, if you will. So, I say to Leroy, Leroy. I'm at work. I'm like, can you drive the car, the truck? And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Saturday he goes to pick it up and it's got a flat tire. All right. It's got a flat tire, but it's rainy season here in Florida. So it's all muddy and murky, whatever. So nothing gets done to the car. He starts up the truck. And he's like, he's like running wise. He goes, it sounds great. It's got AC. Everything seems fine. All right, cool. Sunday rolls. I say to him like, Hey, I was like, I don't, I, my compressor's with me. I was like, so um, obviously you can't use it, but I think I have a can of fix a flat in the back office. And he says, all right. Sunday rolls around. He goes back to the shop. He's like, hey, there's no fix a flat back there. I'm like, do me a solid. Shoot over to Harbor Freight. Pick up a little air compressor, you know, maybe a hundred dollar joint, nothing crazy. And, uh, you know, fill the tire up because it's somewhat of a decent day and drive the car again. I'm going to say it again. It's a green light car, guys. Why are you not driving it? You want it to break on you, not the buyer. Because if it breaks on the buyer, now that reflects upon you. If it breaks on you, yes, it's a headache because you have to go through all that bullshit, but at least you're not ruining your reputation. So anyway, he's driving the car, the truck, all day long. I say, let your wife use it. I don't care. So he's driving it around town, you know, doing his errands, doing whatever it is that he's got to do. That's none of my concern. Um, and of course, he's got a dealer tag, you know. So he's driving, 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 driving. Sunday turns into Sunday night. Sunday turns into Sunday evening, rather. It's about, let's say, 8 o'clock, all right? So he's pulling back into the dealership. He doesn't feel comfortable taking the car home. God forbid something was to happen. Which I don't care. I'll be honest with you guys. Like, if you're doing me a solid and you're test driving one of my cars and you take it home and, you know, God forbid someone steals the wheels or breaks into it, which very rarely happens as we just had two cars stolen, um, I don't really worry about shit like that. Anyway, he drops it off at the dealership and he notices that there's a car following him. And he's just like, hmm, it's kind of weird. You know, this, this guy's been making all the same turns I'm making. But... The dealership is on kind of a main drag in Tampa, so it's definitely, you know, it could be anything. But when he pulls into the car dealership, the car pulls in behind him. So he's thinking, all right, you know, everyone's on high alert because we just got broken into. They just stole two cars maybe two or three weeks ago. The guy did get caught, but you still, you know what I mean? Like, if you ever had something taken from you, you're still on high alert. Uh... Anyway, so he parks the truck right quick. The car drives by him, goes further into the dealership. Two guys, I believe, hop, no, a woman and a, a male and a female jump out of the car. He's taking the license plate off the truck, and they're like, hey, is that truck for sale? And he's like, Leroy's like, yeah, actually, it is for sale. He's like, but how did you guys know or whatever? And they're like, oh, well, it said dealer on the bottom. 
And when you had gotten off this exit, we know this is a, a main drag for car dealerships. So we figured you were coming back to your dealership. Uh, totally suspect. You know what I mean? Totally suspect. They were on some Inspector Gadget type shit that day. So anyway, um, he's like, it is, uh, you know, and, and the guy wants to start talking money. And I had said to Leroy, I was like, never talk money to someone who hasn't even driven the car. Because what they're doing is, they're, they're, and it's a typical mentality that we have, right? We want to negotiate on a car before we drive it. So let's just say we got a $4,000 car. We want to negotiate it down to, say, 3300 right? Then we're going to take it for a test drive and come back and be like, hey, listen, I said 33 before I even drove the car. After driving the car, I know this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong. Now you start to negotiate even below the 3300 so, um, it's a, it's a, it's a, uh, typical, you know, negotiating tactic, but I had said to Leroy in the past, never, ever talk money with someone who has not driven the vehicle. So he says, well, why don't you guys take it for a ride? He gets their licenses or whatever, and they take the car for a ride. And you know, the, the wife jumps out of the car and is like, oh my God, I love that truck so much saying it to the husband. Leroy happened to be by another car, heard the conversation, not a big deal. Long story longer, the guy's like, I want the truck. So the owner's like, all right, well, you're looking at about 4,000. Uh, no, you're looking at like 3,800. Um, the guy's like, all I got is $4,000, and that has to include everything. Um, you know, Leroy calls me up. He says, hey, will you take four grand out the door? And if you guys have been watching this channel, I know you know what I said. Well, you know what I said because we're sitting here making a video about it. I said, yes. Fast nickel over a slow dime every day. Every day. Fast nickel beats a slow dime, hands down, in my book. So I had the car for two days now. Got delivered Friday. Sunday, someone drives it. And they say, I got a G note in my pocket. I'm going to put down $1,000 as a deposit. Okay. I'm like, I don't know if they're going to come back or not. They'll probably just want their money back. In, in Florida, you're not really allowed to keep a deposit. Um, we do have it written a certain way where you're actually paying us to not advertise the vehicle. So it is not a deposit. You're paying for a service. Would I keep someone's $1,000? Probably not. I, I, I just don't feel good about it. You know, things happen in people's lives and $1,000 is a lot of money. Um... But anyway, point to the stories, which you guys want to know, right? How much I made. At the tax, title, registration, all that bullshit got backed out of the $4,000. I ended up with like 33 and change. Cleared $700 on that vehicle. After everyone got paid, I ended up walking away with about $700. Bucks. Um, I'm not going to bullshit you, man. I'm fucking happier than a pig and shit. Seriously, do I wish it was more? Sure. Sure, I wish I made a million dollars on that car, okay? Um, could it have been less? Absolutely. Could I have lost money? Yes. But guys, here's what I want you to do, okay? If you ever find yourself in a predicament where you don't think you've made enough money for whatever it is that you've done in terms of selling cars, right? Think about the amount of money you profited. Let's just say my $700, there are people in this world right now that work 40 hours a week, okay? 40 hours a week, making $9 an hour, comes out to be $360, okay? That means that that person has to work two weeks, 80 hours, to make that same 700 and change, okay? We made it in two days doing nothing, Keep that in mind. Now, I know a lot of you guys out there, your negative Nancy's are going to be like, oh, but there's a lot of people that work one hour and make the same amount of money. Correct. I'm not one of those motherfuckers. I don't have the education nor the know-how. What I do know is I bought a car Friday, sold it Sunday. We made 700 bucks, roughly. And um, while I do wish it could have been more, I am super grateful that the car is gone and another one in the record books. So, guys, I hope that's helpful. I hope that encourages you. Does it happen like that quite often? No, it doesn't. I know I say that in every freaking video when it comes to selling cars. 
But that's the truth of the matter. It does not happen all the time, okay? Um, but it does happen. So get out there, make your money, leave me your, your wins and your losers in the in the in losses in the comments. Hopefully I don't see any of them because I only want you guys to succeed. Um again, demoflips at mail.com if you need to holler at me. And that's it, guys. Take care of yourselves, take care of your loved ones. I'm out of here. That's my best friend.